I'm Matt. Um, so I'm here today to, to, to talk about some uh, stories I've collected over the years. I'm a designer, a scientist, and a maker, and I started my career working at design consultancies around the Midwest before joining Medtronic and currently work at 3M as a design research principal. I live in Lake Elmo with my family, 10 chickens, a bunch of bees, and a lot of trees. My uh, background's in product design as well as uh, psychology, human factors, and gerontology. So I try to bring that perspective and try to focus on the intersections between people and technology and look for ways to improve those experiences. I've spent the last 10 years or so studying healthcare specifically, and I've had the opportunity to visit homes and dental clinics, operating rooms and ICUs, and talk to administrators and clinicians as well as patients and other stakeholders as they navigate this increasingly complex uh, healthcare system we're all familiar with. And my job is, is to try to imagine the future and kind of predict where uh, 3M should be positioned to, to deliver value in that future. And we do this with qualitative research, creating storyboards and concepts that we test and, and refine with, with our customers and, and internal stakeholders. So what does that future look like? So we all know the healthcare system today is challenged, right? We spend more money, uh, our outcomes aren't where they necessarily could be, and uh, there's an increasing sense of frustration with the cost and complexity of these systems. But as a designer, I feel like we can't just give up and throw in the towel, right? So my job is to ask this question, how might we uh, start to address and, and find a path, better path through these uh, challenges? And when I ask these questions to some of the, the people I have the opportunity to work with, I get two very different perspectives and points of view about uh, where the future lies. And the, the first point of view I want to share comes from the administrators, all right? These are the, uh, the, the managers, the infection preventionists, the C-suite executives, and they're looking at this from the top down and, and looking at that bottom line. Um, they're, they're trying to make sense of all the, the data, trying to predict and uh, deliver the greatest value to their stakeholders. But they're cha challenged by how many variables they have to manage and to try to find and make sense of the, the, the puzzle they have in front of them. So they're looking for consistent, quantifiable data that will help them make sense of, uh, of, the, of the best path to the best outcome. And the most common root cause they identify is the human element, the unpredictable human. The second point of view uh, comes from some of those humans in, in the system, the clinicians. So the nurses and the surgeons and technicians, they're, they're trying to navigate this environment, but they're seeing it one patient at a time uh, from the bottom up. They're really the grassroots of healthcare and measured their success one patient at a time. And they're overwhelmed by the same checklists and paperwork and training and demands for compliance that the administrators need to try to make sense of this big, hairy problem. And so they're spending more time with computers than they are with patients and clinical teams. And it's making it harder and harder to provide the kind of personalized and holistic care that they know that their patients deserve. When I talk about the future with the administrators, they tend to be excited about the potential for technology to make sense of it. If we have smart connected devices, a free flow of data throughout the system, smart systems can, can look at that big pile of data and make sense of it and find the precious few things that will deliver the most value. They see a future where the hospital basically has a brain and can constantly track and monitor what's going in, on inside and can intervene and, and correct course and recommend best practices, uh, delivering the best products and processes and people to, uh, to the patient's need for the best value and outcome. I remember one executive from a West Coast uh, health system who uh, I was talking to and said, you know what I really need? Robot doctors. There's just too much human error and variability in our current approach. Humans are just inherently unpredictable. Not surprisingly, when I talk to clinicians, uh, this, this vision is not nearly as appealing, and I hear a lot of skepticism. Uh, they don't believe a computer could ever replace the critical thinking of a clinician. They've seen firsthand how well-intentioned so-called smart systems can really impede on that human connection they desire with the patient, ignore the craft of medicine, and they feel like we're already putting too much faith in machines. Clinicians want a future where they have time and resources, where there's more investment in patients' holistic health experiences and incentives and tools that empower the patients to do more, uh, to take responsibility for their own health. 
It's time and resources they need to deliver the patient-centered care that will bring order to this chaos. And I remember a, a nurse that I talked to at a, a small hospital in Rochester, Minnesota, um, and she patiently listened to my grand vision of a technology-enabled future, uh, then stopped me and said, I'm, I'm sorry, these are all really nice ideas, but what I really need is more time and another nurse in my schedule, not VR goggles and an automated checklist. So where's the balance? How do we leverage and reconcile these disconnects? And how might we augment humans instead of replace them? How might we help machines be more human? And how might we help technology deliver the promise while mitigating some of the risks that come with it? So not surprisingly, maybe, I see designers as having a great opportunity and role in reconciling these uh, disconnects. We focus on building empathy and then collaboratively building solutions then testing them and iteratively refining them with the customers in the context of use. It's all about engagement and augmentation, not exclusion and automation. So why design? Well, we're inherently user-centered and holistic thinkers. We're comfortable working within constraints, and our ideas have to be desirable, they have to be economically viable, and the technology has to work. And further, they have to succeed in the marketplace, or else it's just a good idea that didn't go anywhere. So if we can leverage technology and bring actionable information and insight to the right people at the right time, I think we can preserve that human connection and offload the menial tasks to the machines, leaving time and resources for the personal and holistic care that our patients deserve. We've got the resources, we've got the technology, so let's co-create that transformative future we all deserve. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Maybe robot executives is the way to go. Hey, yeah, I'll, I'll throw doctors. that into the mix. So sure. by the way, it was, I loved your slides, uh, less is more, but we can't let go of the fact that those were post-its and you work for 3M. 3M, yeah, so little plug, little plug. Big post-it post post is on the, on the case again. Okay, <clears throat> you're king for a day. Thank you. Done. Okay. You get to make one change to everything you were just talking about and kind of how the stuff works. What's the change you're making? Well, I think if we could find ways to, uh, and I don't have the answer, but it, since I'm king, I will force someone else to find the answer, um, to how we can break down some of the walls and some of the motivations and incentives between manufacturers like 3M and our customers, the hospitals, and uh, the patients. And if, I really believe that if we could get the right people, the right resources together, and start to tackle these problems with the benefit of the technology we have emerging, that we could come up with solutions that, that strike those balances. And I really think it's not about the machines taking over and doing it for us or for clinicians or even for patients, but really helping focus our efforts and our resources on what's gonna provide the best impact for me or for you. Um, so finding a way to, to do that N of one to N of infinity kind of uh, connection and bring the personalized care that's gonna help you deliver the best, uh, find the best outcome for your, your challenges. So you're king for a day and you're gonna have more meetings. Sounds, sounds good. Yes, All workshops, right. not meetings, <laughs> workshops. Thank you very much. Matt Zabel, thank you very much for being here.